This week on FIFA Football Mundial, we sit down with Portugal and Real Madrid's Cristiano Ronaldo. And we're on the promotion trail in the Principality of Monaco. But first, we go to Central America to meet the up-and-coming national team of Panama. I know that for our country, qualifying for the World Cup finals is something that's very, very difficult to achieve. Those were the words of former Panama striker Julio Delivaldes nearly 15 years ago, the last time FIFA Football Mundial caught up with him. A lot has changed since then for perhaps the greatest Panamanian footballer of all. For one, he's been the coach of the national side since September 2010. Yes, I did say that back then. I was saying it as a footballer. It was my greatest desire as a player because I knew that it would be very hard, as Panama didn't have a football culture back then. But if I didn't achieve it as a player, then I'd like to achieve it as a manager. We have a great chance now. This is the second time we've made it to the hexagonal tournament, the final round of the qualifiers. We've progressed so much in the last few years. It's been excellent so far. Julio was our teammate. He's like a brother, like a father to us. And we have his unconditional support. He's a coach that knows what he wants that knows what he likes, and he knows how to manage a team very well. He's also fighting to get to a World Cup for the first time. That depends on what all of us do, and, hopefully, the work we do together will get us there. I hope we can go really far. With experienced heads like Blas Perez and captain Felipe Baloy, players who first came into the side when Deli Valdez was at his peak, Panama have already improved on their only previous appearance at this stage of FIFA World Cup qualifying. That was back in 2005, and though there was the occasional spectacular goal, they finished bottom and winless. What we're trying to do, more or less, is to bring certain types of players into the national setup at under 15 and under 16 level. And we want them to have specific role models in the senior side, players such as Baloy, Blas Perez, and Gabriel Gomez. These players are the templates, and we're trying to make the youngsters fit into the same mold. This is so that when they do finally get called up to play in the full national side, they feel that they are already part of the team. Panama certainly have a passionate and vociferous fan base behind them, and no group typifies that support like La Estrema Roja. Formed in 2010, they're led by Gerardo Samaniego and are unequivocally behind Deli Valdez. It was the best decision, the best decision that could have been made, because he's so experienced. When he was a player, he gave everything for the team, him and his brother. And it's become very clear that he has the trust and respect of the players, and vice versa too. It's vital the respect works both ways. In the days leading up to the game, we start preparing. We know what we need to do to create a spectacle. We work very late into the night in the days prior to the game to make sure everything is finished. So that, on the day of the game itself, we can provide a message of support for the squad. That's so they can play as well as they can out on the pitch. And it's not only the supporters' clubs that are gripped by national team fever. The employees of La Cascada, an internet TV channel that specialises in comedy as much as football, have been passionate backers of Los Canaleros. Ubaldo Davis is the channel's director. We don't pressurise them in the way other sports journalists do. We just let them play. They're our friends. 
They feel the pressure when other media criticize them for their mistakes. And many times you think you see dark forces at work because of that. But we don't criticize, we just let them play. Whenever the national team plays, the country stops. There are no cars on the streets, it's crazy. And if we win, then we all go out onto the streets. We have a small main road here, La Calle Cincuenta, and we all go crazy on it. Hopefully, we'll soon be going there, more often. The most recent visitors to a buzzing Rommel Fernandez Stadium were Honduras, early leaders of the six-team final qualifying group. The top three go directly to Brazil, with the fourth playing off against New Zealand. A home win would cement Panama's status as real contenders. And it took the hosts only two minutes to make a breakthrough. Luis Tejada sending a crowd of nearly 20,000 into raptures. Honduras had started their own campaign with victory over the USA and a draw with Mexico. They're not to be underrated and they probe for a way back in. Panama had let a two-goal lead slip in their previous home game against Costa Rica, so the fans could be forgiven for betraying a few nerves. However, with a quarter of an hour left, Perez scored his tenth goal of the campaign to seal the win. With three matches played, Panama topped the group. When I was a child, we always used to get thrashed and that's now changed a lot. It's very different now for teams facing Panama. It's a lot harder because we've grown as a football team. We're respected in Central America and throughout the CONCACAF region as well. We've obtained that respect by winning our games and through the growth of this team. You can feel it in the streets in day-to-day -day life, when you go out shopping, you feel that everybody is at one with the team. They're all very excited. And what all Panamanians now want is for us to qualify for the World Cup. There's great excitement about it, and it's the wish of everyone that we can go on and achieve just that. Panama have climbed to an all-time high of 38 in the latest FIFA Coca-Cola World Ranking. Their World Cup qualifying campaign resumes in June with a trio of matches against Mexico, the USA and Costa Rica. Croatia were the big movers at the top of the ranking, rising five places after their recent successes in FIFA World Cup qualifying. Elsewhere, Ecuador cracked the top 10 for the first time in their history. Meanwhile, in Central Asia, Kyrgyzstan leapt to mammoth 59 spots, up to 142nd, after victories over Macau, Pakistan and Tajikistan saw them qualify for the 2014 AFC Challenge Cup. 